Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 28 of the April Eco Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. So I just to uh, give a, you know, sometimes I get, like to give a, a relog type style update. So uh, for maybe future Larry, but also maybe you at home. But yeah, so I played software earlier today. I kind of hurt myself a little bit, scraped my knees again. And also like, got, oh, the other one. Yeah, I got like blood all over the place. So yeah, maybe you can see it. Maybe it's not that bad, actually. Oh, look, I see the other one. Uh, so yeah, so I'm, so this video may be a little bit short because I should probably tend to it, but it is eight o'clock. Uh, so I should, well, maybe I don't, I don't know if I should, but I am doing it anyway. So yeah, uh, hope everyone's doing all right. Hope everyone's having a good week. It's Wednesday, 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 uh, maybe Thursday, depending on where you are. So yeah, let's, let's get started. Is it going to be another, uh, connected components or, or, or what you might call it? Um, minimum spanning tree or, or, or something like that. Let's find out. Okay, cool. So today's problem is path with minimum effort. So you're a hiker, you're going on a hike, 2D, da, 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 up, down, left, where you wish to find the world. What is the effort? The, a route's effort is the maximum absolute difference in height between two consecutive cells of the route. Okay. Mm. Maximum absolute difference in the... A route's effort. Okay, let me double check what that means. Because I wasn't sure that... Um... Okay, maximum of this route. Okay. So I guess that's what it meant. I... Wait. Oh. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because I wasn't sure if, if you're supposed to sum it, you're supposed to take the max of it. Um, but... Because this 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 uh, thing is very concise, but maybe not necessarily precise because it doesn't really... I don't know. You can, you can interpret it in multiple ways if you like. Um, that's why I wanted to um, kind of make sure. Um, okay. So in that case, um, this is going to be connected components. The, um, one thing to know is that R and C is less than 100. So R times C is going to be 10,000. And 10,000, um, let me write it down already. That means that what I can, what I can say is that... What we're going to do is binary search, right? Because that, um, maybe there's a better way of doing it, but we're going, but it's connected components and binary search, meaning that uh, well, we're supposed to go from top left to bottom right. Okay. Meaning that we try a certain answer, see if that, that let us get to the answer and then see if it's good enough. So one thing that I don't do a very good job in this in these videos in general, today I'll try a little bit be uh, differently, is that I don't really show, because in my head I'm like, okay, did this looks good, so I'm going to go. But sometimes I, I skip a little bit on the this looks good part. And what I mean by that is that um, I do do a preliminary uh, mathematical thing in my head to see if it it's fast enough, right? And and sometimes, especially on some uh, previous problems, when, when, you, when the solution that I propose is linear, I'm like, okay, linear is going to be fast enough because it's linear. You have to read the input. You can't really go faster than that, right? Sometimes it's n log n because you do some sorting. I'm like, okay, n log n is usually fast enough because for an n log n that's too slow, you know, n is too big and you you don't even have time to read the input anyway, right? So that's basically the idea sometimes. Um, and that's why I kind of, like when I have an algorithm, sometimes I skip ahead. But in this particular case, um, maybe I'll do a little bit more, right? So if we do a connected component, uh, essentially a breath first search, let's say, you could do a death first search, you could do it with, with union fine if you like. But let's, let's say um, we do a breath first search, right? A breath first search is going to be, O of V plus C, or V plus Z. Um, and the number of edges in this case, it's going to be at most four edges because it's up, down, left, right. So this is going to be O of V, and O of V is equal to O of R times C, right? So this is going to be, eh, let's say, 10,000 nodes because it's 100 square. Um, and then now for binary search, let's say we binary search on the answer. Well, the other thing that I, I, I did see, but I didn't point out, is that the height could be up to 10 to the 6. That means that the, the most difference is going to be 10 to the 6 minus 1. Oops, I mistyped. Minus 1, but you know, for, for the most effective is 10 to the 6. And then log, and then obviously if you do a binary search of that, what is that? 10 to the 6, uh, I type, mistyped word again. 10 to the 6 is a million, so that means it's 20, right? Roughly speaking. Um, so that means that this 20 times 10,000, which is like, Roughly speaking, 200,000 uh, uh, number of, you know, iterations. So that's going to be fast enough. So then that's what we're going to do. Um, I I do, and I should have 
a binary search video. I recorded one, but I have to finish editing. So maybe look out for that if that's something that you're interested in. But, but, uh, But yeah, but I'm gonna go over it quickly the way that I always do it. So if you have any like confusion, please watch it again because I I feel like I'm doing okay on the explanation on binary search only because I've done it so many times. But okay, so we'll keep track of the bounds. Um, and the bounds, what are we binary searching on, right? What we're binary searching on is the possible output. And a possible output could be on the smaller side, could be zero. So that's the lower bound. And then on the upper side, on the upper bound, it's going to be 10 to the 6 minus 1. Um, for, I'm just going to do 10 to the 6 because it's, you know. Uh, in theory, you could also just change this to the max of the height. That'll be a little bit faster for sure. So maybe do that if, if you want to do for the loop. And the way that I always do it, and this is just the way that I do it, you can... You know, if you understand another way better, that's on you. You know, that's up to you, right? But I always do it inclusive because then I can write this loop. Um, meaning that left, both left and right are inside the possible answers. Or they are possible answers, right? Um, and the reason why I, that this is important to me is that I can write this loop. Because that means that when, when this is no longer true, um, that it means left is equal to right, and that, that means that we have a range of one number, right? And when we have a range of one number, that means that's the answer. That's basically the idea here. Um, and then, you know, I know that there are fancier right, ways to write this with, with respect to overflow and stuff like that. We don't need to worry about overflow for this one, so I'm just gonna write mid like this. And then here we go, if connected of mid, so what happens? If, if this is connected, that means that mid is a possible answer, right? It's a possible answer. So therefore, we want, and we want to try a smaller answer because that's what the, the problem asks you for. So then right is equal to mid, right? Um, because right is a possible answer, right? So yeah, um, I could draw it out too, but eh. otherwise mid is not a possible answer. And then the invariant that we're trying to keep here is that, you know, left is equal to mid plus one because mid is not a possible answer and you want something bigger, so you just push it plus one. And that's basically it, really. And then at the end, you could return left, you could return right because it doesn't really matter because um, left is equal to right. So that's why I don't have to worry about anything like that. Um, of course, we have to write this connected part. And this connected part is just what it sounds like. We, we try to, you know, um x say or target maybe um if we only connect edges that are target um app target differences can we get from top left to bottom right and that's basically what we're trying to answer also i'm just going to set up my directional thing um da -da -da -da. Yeah, and that's basically it. Um, so now we start by, yeah, we you can write this in depth for search, you can write in breadth for search, you can write it with connected components, whatever you like, um, or union fine rather. So, and I'm gonna, today I'm gonna write breadth for search because I just like breadth for search in general. Um, so we have a queue. Oops. We are going to push Um, yeah, zero, zero from, from the beginning. Um, we could even have, um, mm, we could have a scene away, but right. Um, technically I suppose we sh we can also have a abstraction on NQ. Um, so then here we have this. And also scene x y is equal to true, um, and then we nq zero zero, and then while length of q is greater than zero, then x y is equal to q dot pop left, and then for dx dy in directions, and this this particular thing I've written probably hundreds or thousands of times right now, so so yeah, if it looks 
weird, let me know. But also, if I get it wrong, that that's a little bit more embarrassing. <laughs> uh, but that does happen from time to time because, you know, we're not all perfect, or at least especially me. There's a lot of silly mistakes. Oh. So now then we're just in queue. Um, you can also do an early termination where if this is equal to R minus 1 and NY is equal to C minus 1, we return true. Um, if we can, I actually missed some steps here, so don't for, wait, wait for a second. Um, so here, that's my usual condition. I have to actually connect the target part, which means that N, um, what is the input heights? If the heights of N, X, and Y minus heights of X, Y, um, and the absolute value of that is less than or equal to target. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that looks good. Let's run it for more test cases. And hopefully that looks good too. So that looks good. Um, the one mistake that I do make a lot is the, the upper bound, lower bound. I feel like I'm a little bit careful this time. So it should be okay. Uh, yeah, and zero's in here. So, so let's give it a submit. Uh, apparently I've gotten wrong before, hopefully this time a, a little bit better. Uh, we'll see. Huh. Oh. Uh, did I make the same mistake last time? I did make the same mistake last time. Uh, okay. Well, I mean... Uh, okay, it just means that... Um, uh, okay, fine. You could add... This is basically the case where you, the, the beginning cell is the end cell, so it never goes to this this if statement, and therefore never return true, so it's wrong. Uh, that's annoying, though. Um, I mean, eh, I guess we can do it in a couple of ways, but uh, and it's also embarrassing because I made the same mistake a year ago. But at least I'm consistent. Uh, yeah. Hopefully that fixes it, yep. Cool, 758 day streak. Um, like I said, we already kind of did the complexity, right? So this loop will have O of log of uh, 10 to the 6, or, you know, I, I like to say range. Uh, I use R for range, but I know that we're going to use R somewhere. So um, let's say U for universe, um, where U is 10 to the 6. So that's the number of iterations that we're going to do here. Um, connected is going to be O of n or or over of r times c which is the size of the input right so so in total this is going to be like what we said earlier here so yeah 20 times ten thousand. so it should be good enough um as long as you don't make a silly mistake like this one like i did twice a year apart um yeah i guess i should pay attention to the constraints i, I wasn't thinking about this one but anyway um cool like i said I'm, i need to tend to I need to put some alcohol or whatever on it so that everything's good. So that's all I have. Um, I'll see you all soon. Stay good. Stay healthy. Take your mental health. Take care and good night. Bye-bye. See you later.